It's China's scripted spectacle of power. And at this Congress, Xi Jinping is clearly in charge. Head of the Communist Party and government for 10 years, he's set to continue for an exceptional third term. Over the weekend, he doubled down on his signature policies. Full control over Hong Kong, promising to do the same over Taiwan, the democratic island China claims as its own. Saying again, he'll use China's rapidly growing military force to invade Taiwan if necessary. Mr. Xi is consolidating all the power of China into his own person as a kind of uh, um, overwhelming dictator. But for all his power, there is grumbling on the streets over Xi's tough zero COVID approach to the pandemic. I really hope these regulations will ease up soon, he says. They're frustrating. Ever since COVID first appeared in China in 2019, much of the country has experienced some kind of lockdown. Even now, more than 300 million people can't move around freely, as Beijing prefers lockdowns and apps that restrict movement to widespread vaccination. That's also stifled China's once booming economy, with the World Bank predicting only about 3% growth this year. Property prices have slumped. One in five young people is unemployed. And so if the economic heft, which China has relied on for so long, uh, were to falter or stall, or if it kind of goes through, uh, you know, kind of a, a recession with Chinese characteristics, then I think there will be consequences. While they fully understand Party loyalists China, insist most in China support that trade-off in Xi's COVID policy. They still want to continue to practice with a dynamic zero COVID policy because they put a higher premium on human lives. But on the eve of the Congress, one protester dared challenge that party line. He unfurled a banner on a busy Beijing overpass, calling Xi a dictator and demanding an end to zero COVID. The banner was removed by police, but not before his message went viral on China's internet with words of support. Behind heavy security at the Congress, those reservations may also be whispered. But Xi's position won't likely be challenged. After all, he's already purged most critics from the party, quite possibly setting sights on being China's leader for life. Sasha Petrasek, CBC News, Toronto. In Sasha's story just now, you heard references to theater and political theater at the Chinese Party Congress. Well, there are lots of messages in all this pomp and ceremony, so we wanted to get a little closer. Look at who's on the stage, a place reserved for the most important in Xi Jinping's circle. This man, Zhang Gaoli, right in the front row, accused of sexual assault by Chinese tennis star Peng Shuai. That allegation initially kicked off a Chinese Me Too movement. Peng Shuai all but disappeared from view. For months, the whole sporting world afraid for her. But here he is, his power and reputation unchanged. Then there's Deng Pufa, son of Deng Xiaoping one of the most important people in China's modern history, some of whose policies have been overturned by Xi Jinping. To see the sun there may squash rumors in China that the formidable family is opposed to Xi Jinping's leadership. And finally, Song Ping, 105 years old, a retired Politburo member who recently released a video implying Xi Jinping's vision of China might not be the right one. And yet he's here. The message their presence appears to send they are now in line. Xi Jinping's China is the only China. And so what does that solidified power mean for the rest of the world? What does it mean for Canada? Victor Xi is an expert in China's financial policies, which makes him perfectly positioned for this question. So, Victor, thank you for being with us. Let's talk about what Canada needs to pay attention to. So today, China was supposed to release its national economic data. It didn't. It says it will delay it indefinitely. What message does that send to the rest of the world? Uh, thanks for having me. Yeah, indeed, it's not really a good sign. Uh, China is the second largest economy in the world. 
Um, it has uh, the world. It is the world's largest trading uh, country. It has a reputation of having a very competent bureaucracy. So, for the bureaucracy to not announce um, a standard set of figures like GDP growth, that is really surprising. Uh, the only conclusion that one can get is that uh, likely the numbers are not good. Uh, and since China is having uh, a party Congress right now, the authorities likely decided that uh, these bad numbers would be inconsistent uh, with the celebratory mood of the party Congress and therefore decided not to announce these numbers. So, uh, but, but, you know, of course, the world can guess what's happening and the news likely is not very good. So, I, I mean, a lot of Canada's connection to China has been an economic one. You know, this country has a trade surplus in agriculture, for example. But, but when China is prioritizing security and state-run enterprises, as we heard in Xi Jinping's speech, what does that mean for Canada? So I think for commodities trade, likely, you know, that will go ahead um, as normal unless, you know, of course, China were to impose additional sanctions on Canada, which which it has done in the past, of course. Um, but, you know, for kind of joint ventures between Canadian and Chinese firms, uh, that may have to go through additional red tape, uh, perhaps on both sides, you know, certainly on the Chinese side and potentially on the Canadian side. Uh, but the, the slowing economy overall, of course, means that, um, consumer demand is going to be weaker uh, in China uh, and that uh, there's just going to be weaker uh, economic activities in China, which will indirectly, directly affect Canada. And I suppose uh, briefly, you know, a lot of people have pinned hopes on this COVID zero policy ending. It's not. What's the effect of that? This policy is not going to change overnight. Uh, it's not going to change, change in the foreseeable future. Uh, so that means in terms of short term tourism uh, in both directions, you know, both uh, people from North America going to China and, and Chinese tourists coming to North America, that's really not going to resume in the foreseeable future. They're not going to spend uh, all this money that they used to spend in North America. Uh, fortunately for us in education, the students are staying uh, for the longer term, they continue to come. Uh, but zero COVID also will slow down economic growth uh, in China because China, Chinese cities will see a whole series of rolling lockdowns in the foreseeable future. It goes on. All right, Victor Xi, thank you for joining us. Thank you.